Why do we love professional wrestling? It's a question that not only non-wrestling fans ask us, but also, at times, we ask ourselves. What is it about this form of entertainment that draws us in so much? What gives us that feeling? The feeling you simply can't describe? It's something that I often wonder, and the answer I usually come to is one of two things, or even both of them. The first being the stories. The stories are what draw us in and suspend our disbelief. They make us forget about any problems we may have in our own lives and distract us for just a little bit. The second point is fan engagement. Fan engagement has more involvement in professional wrestling than it does in nearly any other form of entertainment. The fans can, you know, dictate plans, they can change stories, and even alter someone's character. When you really think about it, it's very simply just fascinating. Over the past year, I've been lucky enough to attend WrestleMania, Ring of Honor, Super Card of Honor, Money in the Bank, and AEW All In. However, despite attending these blockbuster events, there is one event that gave me that feeling that you just can't describe more than any of the others. And that event was Progress Wrestling Chapter 160. As soon as I entered the queue for the event, I noticed something unusual. A lot of people in the queue knew each other. There were easily like a few hundred people attending. Yet it was almost like many of them were some extended family. Most of them were also wearing Progress merchandise, and I don't mean, you know, wearing merchandise from a wrestler in Progress Wrestling, but simply wearing merchandise with a Progress Wrestling logo on it. If you go to a WWE or AEW show, you don't see most of the crowd, you know, wearing merchandise with the company's logo on it. Maybe at the start of AEW you did, but lately, uh, you don't see that often. And that really, really surprised me. Upon entering the building to go to our seats, the owner of Progress Wrestling, Lee McAteer, was at the door welcoming everybody. Of course, for a bigger promotion such as WWE or AEW, this would be impossible to do. I mean, you know, imagine Tony Khan standing at the door. It just wouldn't be possible. There's multiple entrances and all of that. But even at other independent wrestling events I've attended in the past, I had never seen an owner of a wrestling promotion interacting with fans like that. Once the show got underway, the atmosphere was outstanding. The crowd was investing into each and every match, and not just because the action was good, but also because throughout most of the matches, a story was being told. You all know me, I believe that story is king in professional wrestling. I'm a firm believer that good action is just not good enough without a story. A story is what pulls us in and suspends our disbelief. Another thing I quickly noticed was that nearly every wrestler on this card was very, very good at interacting with the crowd. Dare I say, better than some talent within the major leagues. Part of this was likely because, you know, the family like Progress crowd, who were mostly familiar with the wrestlers and storylines, so maybe that was a bit easier for them to interact with compared to a casual crowd that WWE and AEW usually have. But still, the wrestlers' engagement with the crowd was just beyond impressive uh, to me personally. I attended the event with a friend of mine who, you know, isn't really a wrestling fan. Throughout the years, I've tried to get him invested into wrestling, but outside of video games, all my attempts have failed. However, while he might not be a wrestling fan, on November 26th, he certainly became a Progress fan. The experience of being so close to the action and almost feeling like part of it at times due to there being no barricade, it really drew him in and he loved it so much. He told me that he'd be up for going again. <laughs> Ricky Knight Jr. and Luke Jacobs had an absolute slugfest of a hard-hitting bout and the women's championship match between Rio, Kanjo and Lizzie Evo was one of the best triple threat matches that I've seen in the past few months and of course the, re the reunion of sanity. 
That was great as well. These were all great moments, but the moment on the show that will stay with me for a long time was the retirement of Warren Banks. If you haven't heard of Warren Banks, you missed out. The dude has been one of the most underrated wrestlers on the UK scene over the past few years, and unfortunately, for whatever reason, he's decided that now was the time to leave the wrestling industry. In his retirement match at Progress Chapter 160, he faced his trainer, Gene Money, in a match that told a heartbreaking story. Money didn't want him to retire. He said it wasn't right and that the world was missing out on seeing Warren Banks and the WWE didn't know what they were missing when they rejected him at a tryout a couple of years ago. Banks wanted Money to fight him, but he kept refusing, but eventually he complied and defeated Banks, with Banks leaving his boot in the ring just 10 feet away from me, and that is something that I will never forget. I, I truly won't. I mean, there were people crying, tears were close to, you know, coming out of my eyes. It was very much an emotional moment, and he really is going to be somebody who the British wrestling scene misses. I absolutely certain. And another moment happened in that match, which to me was just absolutely crazy. Gene Money threw his nipple tape. Uh, and it landed on my mate, the guy who I've said you know, isn't a wrestling fan, but now is a progress fan. It landed on his lap. And here it is. The, the nipple tape that Gene Money had on him. Feels a bit gross touching, to be honest with you. But this brings us to the main event. Spike Privé versus Kid Lycos. For those of you who aren't aware of British wrestling, Spike Treve is possibly the most hated man in the scene right now. He's had a lengthy reign as progress champion, but a reign that Kid Lycos wanted to end. Lycos has had a crazy career. Stop, start, stop, start, career threatening injuries, but through it all he prevailed. And this all led him to that match. The match against Spike Treve, the progress world championship on the line. No disqualification, anything goes, but there was a twist. The twist was that if Kid Lycos lost, he'd have to unmask himself, and not just for the time being, but for the rest of his career. Usually in wrestling, when we hear we are getting a no disqualification match, we presume that there will be you know, a few chair shots and maybe a table spot to pop the crowd if they are lucky, but this match well, it really lived up to the no disqualification stipulation. It was brutal. The ring looked like it was bleeding by the end of it. Glass was everywhere. Tears in the eyes of fans. Absolute madness. As I previously said, to me, story is everything in wrestling. And the story in this match was just phenomenal. I was hooked from the moment the bell rang until the match ended. Kid Lycos got close, but not close enough. Spike Treve retained the belt in a storytelling masterclass of a fight. <laughs> At this point, you'd presume the crowd would just be going home sad. But somehow, we didn't. The show ended with Spike Treve showing a glimpse of respect towards Kid Lycos after he unmasked him, with Lycos then cutting a promo that got every single person in that crowd fired up, with some even having tears in their eyes. And Kid Lycos stated that just because he will no longer be wrestling under that mask doesn't mean he will no longer be wrestling. The mask chapter has ended for Lycos, but now we get to see the guy behind that mask. Since the pandemic, not many people have been talking about progress wrestling, but from the family-like environment of being at the shows to the top quality wrestling and stories told through the action, I truly believe progress wrestling is perhaps the most underrated and overlooked promotion in the world right now. But honestly, it kind of needs to stay that way. If progress wrestling got a TV deal, they wouldn't be able to do half the things that makes them progress, that makes them great. If they ran larger arenas, they would likely have to follow tighter regulations and put a barrier between fans and the action, which again, just wouldn't be progress. The beauty of progress wrestling is that it is a hidden gem, and perhaps selfishly, I kind of hope it stays that way, but at the same time, 
everybody deserves to see this everybody deserves an opportunity to go to one of their shows to even watch their shows on demand honestly they're great and attending one if you ever can honestly maybe the best value for money ticket in wrestling right now i had a great time thank you for watching this youtube video if you did like please hit the subscribe button because of course your wrestling republic was still growing on youtube if you're not following us on our instagram make sure you go follow us on our instagram as well at wrestling republic and on twitter slash x at wrestling republic but we will see you guys in the next video peace